Let's see, number three is a 24 year old with a slow growing hand mass. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we've got a large, large mass of something, multiple nodules here. Okay, do you have any ideas about this particular case? I, I have one that like, because the cells look very epithelial. Uh-huh, right? yep. And like putting together with uh, like the sarcoma looking for filtration and like necrosis and like it's a malignant tumor probably. So I would, I went with the like epithelial sarcoma. Very good, this is indeed an epithelioid sarcoma. And from low power, they can have uh, different types of patterns, but this they have a tendency to make nodules deep down in the subcutis or even down near the fascia. They often grow the classic form of epithelioid sarcoma. It typically presents as a mass on the distal extremity of a young adult is the kind of classic you know, um, scenario, although I've seen it in other settings. And they tend to make these nodules that have central necrosis. And sometimes they can be less cellular. This one's pretty cellular and scary looking even from low power. And it's got a lot of inflammation. But sometimes when they're not very cellular, that necrosis in the middle can make them mimic palisaded necrobiotic granuloma like you'd see in a rheumatoid nodule mm -hmm. or deep granuloma annularity. And the cells can kind of look histiocyte-like sometimes. Again, though, when you get close here, Usually, even on those that look a lot like rheumatoid nodule from low power, when you get closer, you're like, ooh, those cells look bad. Mm -hmm. They're huge cells. Mites. Yeah, they all have mites. They're really big and atypical. They tend to have this kind of pale, cleared out chromatin like this. See, they sometimes they have like this, uh, this kind of very pale vesicular looking chromatin, kind of a grayish color. The cytoplasm is usually this dense, pink cytoplasm because they are filled with keratin filaments. So they look epithelioid and they stain with keratin because they're filled with keratin filaments. So because of that, they, they almost have that kind of hard cytoplasm that you see like in a squamous cell carcinoma. Mm. But to me, I think cytologically, sometimes they have some resemblance to squamous cell carcinoma to my eye. I don't, I don't hear people talk about that very often. Although you're not going to, you know, get a, uh, how old was this patient again? I can't remember. What did I say? They're young though, right? Sorry, 24. Yeah, 24 year olds not going to get a nodule of squamous cell carcinoma in their subcutis, right? That just doesn't make sense. So, um, in any case, this is epithelioid sarcoma. And um, there is a, there's a variety of different epithelioid soft tissue malignancies that can come into the differential with this. And that's kind of a little outside the scope of, of for just one video. But, um, and a lot of the epithelioid the sarcomas that have epithelioid features, a lot of them stain with keratin, which is particularly frustrating and problematic. So these tumors also have loss of INI1 oh, or yeah. SMARC-B1, S-M-A-R-C-B1. In the vast majority of cases, there are some rare exceptions that have an alternative, a SMARC-A4, I think, or BRG1 that can be lost. Uh, I don't think I've seen one of those yet that I know of, but uh, in any case, the, uh, these tumors will have INI1 loss usually, and so the nuclear INI1 is usually expressed in the nuclei of most nucleated cells in the body, and the tumor cells will have loss of that, but the background cells will stain. So you'll still see it in inflammatory cells and endothelial cells. And it's not a specific marker. There are, is a growing list of other tumors that can also have INI1 loss, but in this setting where you have this look, and it's the distal extremity of a young person, and it stains like an epithelial sarcoma, the INI1 loss can be helpful to confirm it. And these uh, tend to be uh, relatively aggressive tumors. They kind of metastasize up the extremity kind of in a sporotrichoid, like, like how sporothrix, you know, grows that kind of pattern and they can metastasize the lymph nodes. So they're kind of weird. They break a lot of the rules that we think of for normal sarcomas. And thankfully they're quite rare, but they, they are uh, very problematic for the poor patients who get them. And it tends to be young people and sometimes children even who get it. So it's a really bad tumor. Um, and you know, you could, if you see the blood, you could think of epithelioid angiosarcoma, which can sometimes have some similarities yeah, in staining. Exactly. Um, for example, ERG, which is a great marker for vascular things, but it stains about half of epithelioid sarcomas. Uh -huh. CD34 tends to stain epithelioid sarcoma. CD31 should be negative, 
So there are some other, you know, there are some, you sometimes have to do a broader panel on these um, uh, to exclude other things in the differential. But that is a good one to remember. So I, I try to remember anytime I think I've got a rheumatoid nodule or a deep granuloma annular, I always ask myself, is there any way it could be epithelioid sarcoma in the hopes that I won't make that mistake? Because I've seen some that were really close mimics. And um, so I just try to make it a habit to ask myself that. And of course, the, most of the time, I mean, granuloma annulari and rheumatoid nodule are so much more common than this very rare tumor. But I try to always keep that in mind so I don't you know, make that mistake.